fancy a change of pace, change of work, change of life? Well, all of that and more is a mere 24-hour flight away. Welcome to Australia. I'm back down under where life's a beach and the great outdoors is on your doorstep. From Melbourne to Adelaide and from Canberra to the central coast, I've been helping <laughs> British families find their dream lives and homes. We've had highs. Come on, come on. We've had lows. I'm going to call it in your favour, sir. Just gone up by $20,000. But it's all been worth it to get that dream home. What do you say to Phil? <laughs> Thank you! Oh, you're very welcome. And now I've come to Sydney. For two workmates, getting a foot on one of the world's most expensive property ladders means they have no choice but to club together. If it is doable in the price range, I'd seriously consider it. But from the off, they're struggling to see eye to eye. I think I prefer something that's a bit more run down. And they end up taking me right round the houses. We have had a bit of a U-turn. But I'm not stopping there. I get a hands-on flying lesson from a British lad whose career's taken off since he came to Oz. I'm flying, everybody! I did that! And I meet the ex-London stressed-out executive... Namaste. ..whose move to Sydney has radically changed her life. In the UK, I didn't want children. Whereas here, I've seen mums on the beach with their children. And I thought, that looks nice. So sit right back for my guide to turning your life upside down and moving to a land down under. <laughs> Australia's not just the land of kangaroos and koalas. It's got vibrant cities, an incredibly varied landscape, plus a lifestyle that we can only dream of in Britain. Food is spectacular, the wine is exceptional. The general attitude to life is very, very refreshing. I come here every year with my Aussie wife Fiona and our two boys for a taste of the lifestyle. One day, we hope to own our own piece of Aussie heaven, so I keep a keen eye on the property market and I'm putting my inside knowledge to good use, helping British families to make the move down under. This is just how I imagine living in Australia. It's perfect. This week, I've come to Australia's most iconic and cosmopolitan city. That's right, I'm in Sydney. Quite simply, this is one of my favourite places. I've always thought Sydney is one of the greatest cities on Earth. Tons of opportunity for work and business. It's full of glitz and glamour. There's a great beach culture. It's got it all. It really has. But the jewel in Sydney's crown is the harbour. As well as the world-famous opera house and bridge, there's nearly 150 miles of spectacular shoreline, much of it fringed by dream properties and ultra des res neighbourhoods. And where else on the planet can heading off to work in the morning be so much fun? This has to be just about the best commute anywhere in any city on the whole face of the earth. What a way to start the day! And it's that quality of life that makes Sydney so special. In fact, it's ranked as the 10th most livable city on the planet. There are 37 beaches and over 40 parks and nature reserves in the Sydney area. In the winter, you can even ski with the snowy mountains five and a half hours drive away. No wonder the city's population is expanding by 80,000 people a year and its economy is booming. But there is a downside to Sydney's popularity. Too many people chasing too few properties. There's loads of demand, not enough supply. Just about every month, it seems there's a new suburb that's rumoured to be the next big thing. Pretty much everyone in Sydney is chasing that ideal mix of city and beach. Coastal suburbs like exclusive Mossman offer the best of both and are home to some of Sydney's most expensive properties. While trendy inner city neighbourhoods like Paddington, halfway between the business district and world famous Bondi, are a magnet for young urban professionals. Two British lads desperate to buy their own home in Sydney's super pricey property market are 29 year old workmates David Luxton and Alistair Hewson. When the insurance company they work for offered them a transfer, the opportunity to get out of the London rat race was too much to resist. Sydney's just a breath of fresh air from that, really. It's a complete change of pace. There definitely seems to be a work-life balance. After work, you can pop down the beach, go for barbecues outdoors. The sports and just in the fresh air. 
It's, it's pretty chill. I did have a nightmare about going back to the UK once. That was kind of a sign to me that I'd make the right move. After six months in Sydney, Al and Dave are fed up with forking out over $3,000 a month in rent. Being investment savvy types, they both decided they want to buy and have worked hard to save up. Problem is, property here costs nearly 10 times the average income, compared to around five times in the UK, making Sydney the second least affordable city on the planet, only beaten by Hong Kong. So the only way they can buy without ending up in the sticks is by clubbing together. But it could put their friendship under a huge amount of strain. Well, we get emotional, probably, first time, first time for everything, and it's, it is a big thing. It's the biggest thing I've certainly ever come, come close to doing, so it's pretty scary. Despite those nerves, the lads both want to push themselves, so they're hoping I can get them a lot for their money. We'd look for an up-and-coming area, somewhere where there's going to be investment, either the city growing or just government investment. Well, I do tend to like properties with a bit of character, a Victorian, somewhere with, with some traditional features. Al and Dave are both keen to make some dollars when they come to sell. So Dave's really up for getting stuck into a renovation job. If it's got potential to knock down walls and do up, um, add some value, that, that's a big bonus for me as well. In this market, getting all of that's going to be a very tough ask. Now, they've come to Sydney to have a good time, but they're also wanting to play the market and try and make some money, which, on paper, very good idea, but in reality could also mean that they're wanting different things. Is it location and lifestyle, or is it money and moving up the ladder? Like most first-time buyers, Al and Dave are going to have to make some difficult choices, and I need to spell them out. What's, what's the main focus of this? Is it the adding value and the money, or is it somewhere to live and somewhere to call home? I think there's going to be a balance. I mean, I'm happy with a place that's got two equal-sized main rooms, yeah. open space, uh, hopefully a nice local, bit of a, an atmosphere in the local area. But I also don't mind if it's slightly run down. Or... I think, for me personally, it's knowing what to do and what to pick out, yeah. uh, which is the, is the big challenge. It, there are various ways to outperform a property market. And one is to refurbish something and make something nicer. Two is to buy in an area that changes during the time that you live there. Or three is to actually make it bigger, to extend it. The best opportunities combine all of those three, because they are the ones that are in the most amount of demand. And finding that perfect combination is not their only challenge. You guys are just mates. You've not got some huge emotional commitment to one another like a couple has. How are you going to take this decision? Are you worried about agreeing, disagreeing, falling out? I think we both bring different things to the table. Alice is very practical. He, he does all the boring stuff about the size of the place and local amenities. And I, I go in and have a feel for what we could do with the place and how we could do it up and a bit more of a vision. So, in Dave's words, Al is practical but boring, while he has flair and vision. Mm, this could be interesting. So I'm concentrating our search between the inner suburbs of Dulwich Hill to the south and Bondi and Coogee to the east they've decided they can stretch themselves to a maximum budget of $600,000, or £375,000. They're after a two-double-bedroom apartment with open-plan living space in a buzzing up-and-coming area. Well, somewhere close to the beach near Coogee would be good news. While the boys are both keen to buy somewhere that's likely to increase in value, Dave's particularly keen on a doer-upper. But I think an easier way of building up equity is to buy into a hidden hotspot. I've spoken to local agents, and one area that's tipped to outperform the market is Marrickville. Originally home to one of Sydney's largest Greek communities, it's only five miles from the city centre where Al and Dave work. But with new bars and restaurants opening up all the time, it's starting to attract the young professional crowd. The first property I'm taking them to see is a modern apartment in a well-maintained complex, and I think it's a little gem. At $550,000, or £345,000, it's well under their £375,000 budget. Come on in, see what we've got for you. Let's have a look. It's okay. been freshly done up by the person who lives here. So they've actually done the work already. Right. So is, is this the kind of living space you're accustomed to? Yeah, I quite like this on the inside, definitely. It's kind of cosy enough, but it's got a, you know, enough space. Don't they? They've done a good job. Well, nice of you to say so, Al, but aspiring developer Dave looks disappointed. There's not much room for improvement. Because it's completely finished, you're not, not going to add value to it. No. Yeah. Um, we're relying on the area. 
mm. and the fact that West Marrickville is hotly tipped as the next Paddington. The, the cafe society is, is here. You start hearing about retail changes and you know that the property prices are going to have, have a, a direct effect. Yeah. You don't look convinced, Dave, but luckily I've got an ace up my sleeve. These guys love the great Aussie outdoors and here they'll get their very own slice of it. That is a special bit, I think. Wow, that is big. I'm thinking evenings out the back, barbecues with friends, what's not to love? We're a little bit overlooked at the back. I'm not convinced by the colour that brick's a bit of a, a 90s Legoland yeah. feel to it. Wrong coloured bricks? I didn't see that one being a deal breaker, but Al quite likes it. So it hasn't got that lack of character. I didn't warm to it and I walked in straight away. But, I mean, what I could see is, you know, midweek, getting up in the morning, you know, walking out through the bedroom, it's quite convenient. You know, quickly grabbing some breakfast in the kitchen and, and going out, I could see that being quite a, yeah. quite a pleasant One bathroom there. Blimey, Dave's got an answer for everything so far. One property down, and I'm worried already these guys aren't seeing eye to eye. Al's seen the investment potential, but Dave still wants to get his hands dirty. I think I'll prefer someone that's a bit more run down and do it. If I can't get these guys to agree, their dream of getting on the Sydney property ladder could be about to come to a premature end. Coming up, Dave's definitely not happy. It looks like a bit of a half attempt at a show home. We take a peek through the keyhole of Sydney's surprising Art Deco heritage, and I meet a Brit who moved down under to find her inner self. Sounds like you're living the dream. You've got the family, the business, the beach lifestyle. We're, we're very happy. We've got everything we can want. I'm back down under making my annual trip to visit the Aussie side of the family. My Australian wife Fiona and I have always dreamed of buying a property here, so I keep a keen eye on the market and have been putting my inside knowledge to good use, helping expat pommies find their dream homes. Wow. I've got all goosebumpy actually. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> and this week I've come to Australia's most exciting city, Sydney. Four and a half million people can't be wrong. There's pretty much a fantasy lifestyle on offer here. You can combine working in a big, fast-paced city with an evening trip to the beach. It's virtually compulsory. British work colleagues Al and Dave are desperate to get on the super expensive property ladder here, but they're putting their friendship to the test by throwing in their lot together. And the stress is beginning to show. Yeah, I quite like this on the inside, definitely. They've done a good job. If it hasn't got that lack of character, I didn't warm to it when I walked in straight away. The boys might be at loggerheads over what to buy, but they both love the Aussie way of life. And if you're inspired to head down under, you're not alone. Sydney is home to over 150,000 Brits, many of whom came looking for a complete lifestyle change. Nicola Ellis, originally from Walton-on-Thames near London, left the UK 12 years ago, desperate to escape the rat race. She now owns and runs two yoga studios in exclusive Mossman, helping Sydney's high-earning, stressed-out executives unwind at the end of the day. Many of our evening classes are, are city workers, and I think that was me when I was living in London. I was that stressed-out executive who worked in the city, didn't take a lunch break. First thing I do is get them all to lie down. Lie down, close their eyes and breathe. Sounds blissful. I'm more of a cricket man myself, but I'm up for giving it a go, so I've come down to Coogee Heads to try out one of Nicola's morning classes. And very relaxing it is too. Press the knuckles away from you, lift the arms up, open up the chest. I want to find out how she's managed to combine finding her inner calm... Namaste. ...with business success. Uh, you weren't a yoga instructor when you came out. I wasn't, no. I was just here as a tourist. I was a backpacker. And, and I started to train to be a yoga teacher just as a way of learning more about it. Not to teach, right. but it was just my passion. OK. But Nicola decided she loved Sydney so much she wanted to stay. And being a yoga instructor offered the perfect work-life balance. De-stressing also helped her make another life-changing decision. In the UK, I didn't want children. Whereas here, uh, I'd see mums on the beach with their children. And I thought, that looks nice. It made having children seem like a natural thing, and that, that changed everything in my life. 
Now that six-year-old Ruby and three-year-old Eddie have come along, Nicola and Kiwi husband Kevin manage their work schedules so they get to spend plenty of time together. And when they need childcare, the Aussie government generously chips in with 50% of the cost for young working families. So life is much less of a juggling act than back in Britain. That outdoor lifestyle this is what makes the key difference. My six-year-old started surfing this year yeah. and she's passionate about it. My three-year-old, he's, he's getting webbed feet and fingers <laughs> because he lives in the water. Mine's well, getting foot rot because he spends his time in Wellington <laughs> boots. And it's not just family life that's going from strength to strength. Nicola's business is also booming. She currently runs 40 classes a week and turns over £94,000 a year. Not bad for someone who came here to escape the rat race. It sounds very much like you've completely turned your life around. Um, is, is that kind of what it takes to make a success? You get out of it what you put into it. It's that Aussie pioneering spirit. And if you, you get involved with that and you support the people around you, they really give you a fair go here. The Australians love to see it when people have a go. And that is exactly what Nicola's done. She's come out here, she's reinvented herself. She's doing something that she loves doing. She's a successful businesswoman, she's had a family. It's taken a lot of guts and determination, but she really is now living the dream. Back to the house hunt. British workmates Al and Dave are risking their friendship by clubbing together to get a leg up on the very pricey Sydney property ladder. But while Al was keen on the ready-to-go apartment in up-and-coming Marrickville, Dave's not having any of it. I think I prefer something that's a bit more run-down and do it up. Dave's dreaming of a development, but Al's more interested in the dream lifestyle. So I'm hoping that my next property gives them both, albeit in a well-established area. The beachside suburb of Coogee, about two miles down the shore from Bondi, has got one of the best beaches in Sydney. And it's not surprising that prices have already shot up here by over 20% in the last year alone. Coogee's packed with bars and restaurants, so even though it's a 45-minute bus ride to the city, it attracts plenty of expat pommies, plus a young, fun-loving crowd who do most of their socialising outdoors. Well, Al and Dave did say they wanted a vibrant area. Well, this is street life in Coogee, it's all going on, and why not, Saturday afternoon, have a party? Seems like they're getting on famously with the locals, but there's no time for chatting up the Sheilas, I've got to find them somewhere to live. And the apartment we've come to see is just round the corner, a stone's throw from the beach. And, as I mean, as we just saw and heard, it is quite a party scene, man. Yeah. That's what we're after. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, from the outside, it looks quite impressive. Well, that's the first hurdle out of the way. At $599,000, or £375,000, this two-bedder is right at the top of their budget. But Dave does get a wall or two to move around. A bit more character, this one. There's still things you could do, do to it. I mean, it's in good condition, but you could personalise it. I like the space, and I do like the shape. Okay. Um, probably not room for a big dining table or anything, but that's not a major problem. Yeah, I like it. Nice tall ceilings. Yeah. Like another detail on the roof. Mm -hmm. And it's open plan. Yeah, I like it. Well, that's promising. Yeah, it's good. The boys both seem keen, and those little art deco details have clearly made all the difference for Dave. The second bedroom could prove a stumbling block, but I'm hoping they'll see it as more of an opportunity. Now, the dilemma is that mm. this is the small bedroom. The flat doesn't have equal sized bedrooms. This one is pretty small as well. Yeah, however, in order to move this wall back into the living room, in order to create the second double, possible to do. There are four flats in the building, you need a majority of them to agree with that. Ballpark figure would be $10,000. It would probably you could put fit. more value on it than ten grand. i would have thought. I've spoken to the agent about that, and he thinks, yeah, 40000 to put on. Well, in terms of adding value to yes. the property rather than actually cost it, OK. Mmm, food for thought. The prospect of $30,000 instant equity has given Dave something to mull over. And the bonus is they'd end up with two equal-sized bedrooms, so no arguments there about who gets which one. You'd, you'd have enough living space left, but we're going to lose some of the detail from the ceiling. We could probably get that sorted. I don't know how much it'd cost, but we're worth looking into. It's quite exciting, though. I quite like the idea of it. 
Don't get too carried away though, Al. Not yet, anyway. Dave's playing it cautious. He wants to be convinced this place is a copper-bottomed investment. In terms of house prices going up in this area, what, what do you think? My take on is, is Kuji has up and come. It's done its thing. It's popular. It's expensive. Yeah. Um, so your risks are reduced, but you're unlikely to outperform whatever the wider Sydney market does. It'll move with the market. It's safe. Right. Because where we've been in Marrickville, slightly riskier, but then there's greater potential for return. Right. We like it. I think it just comes down to getting the neighbours to agree to knocking that wall down. If it is doable in the, in the price range, I'd seriously consider it. Bingo! Looks like Coogee could be a contender. And it's great to see the boys singing from the same hymn sheet. But there's a risk they wouldn't get consent to get that wall moved, so I think we have to carry on looking. But I still feel buying into the right area is a far more straightforward way of getting a jump on the market. So we're heading to Redfern, Sydney's best kept secret, and my top tip as the next property hotspot. Just one stop away from the central business district, it's probably the last remaining bit of the city centre to get the gentrification treatment. Redfern's surrounded by some of the city's most exclusive postcodes. Prices have already boomed in neighbouring suburbs like Surrey Hills. The hip creative types have been attracted by the affordable property and now the developers have started to follow. Very up and coming. It's been held back a little bit in the past by lots of these sort of semi-industrial buildings, but they're now being converted into these units. Right. The apartment we're looking at is pretty much the perfect designer pad. The developer owner wants a quick sale, so it's going to auction with a guide price of $600,000 or £375,000. It's got the requisite two double bedrooms, plus two bathrooms and two sun terraces. I'd say perfect for two young professionals. Now, see what you think of this. Open plan. Um, <laughs> the smiles. It, um, this is going to get interesting. It's being sold at auction in about two weeks' time with a guide price of 600000 That's what they want for it. This is very plain. It's, it, it's not blowing me away, to be honest. It's just not the sort of property that I'd, I'd go for. Blimey, we're barely through the door and Dave's made his mind up already. But if it doesn't appeal to his heart, maybe I can appeal to his head and his wallet. If you were to go one stop in any direction out of the city, you go to King's Cross or if you go to Milson's Point, you find properties that are twice the price of this. Yeah. So this has got an awful lot of room for growth. In terms of what your money could do for you in years to come, I think this would be quite exciting. Not doing it for you, David? <laughs> uh, just, just in practicalities, even the sink, it's so small. If I was to actually move in, I'd want it to be practical. It, yeah. kind of, it looks like a, a bit of a half attempt at a show home, but they haven't really thought practicalities, to be honest. It's just plasticky, this is all chipped, it's just a bit... It looks nice, but when you actually moved in, I might be just being over negative, I've just walked in, but mm. I'd like to see the rest of it. Well, it's your money, Dave, or half of it is anyway, but I want to know what Al thinks. I like where it is. Yeah. Um, Access to work. Yeah, I mean, convenience factor is definitely yeah. there. I do like the area in terms of future development, that kind of thing. It's nice to have the outside areas. This is probably the practical suggestion. Precisely. It's practical and it's a great investment. Al clearly gets it, but I'm worried Dave can't see beyond first impressions. The boys are split right down the middle again. Kind of like city living, but without any... Just looking onto a car park, it's just a bit much about it. Because this is very sellable in terms of future outside space. If they do build up around it, it's going to be quite an appealing area. I'm not convinced by this one. I'm going to have a better lifestyle on the beach in Coogee. Looks like Al's been overruled. Coming up, Dave's taking me round the houses. We have had a bit of a U-turn. I think we're sort of the wrong flat. We take a nose around some of the best Art Deco properties in Sydney, and I take to the skies for my first ever flying lesson. I'm flying, everybody! I did that! I'm in Australia doing what I do best, helping house hunters find their dream homes. This week I've come to sunny Sydney to help two British work colleagues club together 
and get a leg up on one of the world's most expensive property ladders. But so far, it's not exactly been plain sailing. This is very sellable in terms of future outside space. It's kind of like city living, but without any... Just looking onto a car park, it's just a bit much about it. The property search might be in danger of going off the rails, but at least Al and Dave's careers are on track. The boys were lucky their visas were sorted out by the insurance company they work for. In fact, around 10,000 Brits who moved here last year were sponsored by their employers in everything from finance to medicine and engineering to mining. The other way you can land a golden ticket into Australia is to make sure you have qualifications and skills that are in demand, which is exactly what 36-year-old Hampshire lad Richard Dorman did. Despite the global downturn in the airline industry, the Australian aviation sector is still growing. So Richard spent four years training to be a commercial pilot, and now he's landed his dream job as a flying instructor, teaching trainee pilots, as well as taking sightseeing flights over Sydney. Richard's invited me for my first ever flying lesson. I've got knots in my tummy. I'm nervous, I'm excited, I've wanted to fly a plane forever. The opportunity to do it over Sydney is going to be very, very special. I just hope I'm going to be able to do it. The actual pilot seat's just over there on the left, which is the one you'll be in. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> co-pilot. Pilot. No, no, you're going to be the pilot. I'm the co-pilot today, so you're taking me flying. I'm, not, I'm, I'm certainly not taking you flying. Are you sure about this? Yep, definitely. And it right. turns out that means I'm going to be doing the takeoff. Apparently that's standard practice for a first lesson. But I'm absolutely bricking it. Strap yourself in, parachutes at the ready. This could be a very bumpy ride. My heart is going about ten to a dozen at this point. OK, so hands on the control yoke. Increasing power now. Nice and smoothly. OK, so that's all yours. My hands are off. That's it, keep you on the floor. Squeeze back more, 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 a little bit more. Here we go. And we're flying. Flying. We're up. That's all yours. I'm flying! I'm flying, everybody! I did that! I was expecting it to be wobblier, or I was expecting it to be wobblier than it. Whoa, now it's wobbly! Here we go, right? Hey. <laughs> Talk about flying by the seat of your pants. But now we're at our cruising altitude of 3,000 feet. I'm going to try and enjoy the ride. Absolutely phenomenal. Terrific way to see Sydney. Oh, my God! There is the Harbour Bridge. It's what we've come for. I'll tell you what, Sydney is special. That's for sure. The view from up here certainly beats sitting at a desk all day in the UK. No wonder Richard loves his job. You know, to be honest, I don't think I'd have the same opportunities over there as I have here, especially with the range of aircraft that we fly and the locations we fly to and, of course, the beautiful scenery. Nine times out of ten, the weather's absolutely crystal clear and perfect. And, um, you know, I remember my days in the UK uh, where, you know, you wouldn't even see the sun. But what goes up must come down. Time to hold your breath again, because guess who's going to be landing her? Yep, that's right, yours truly. All right, so here we go. Lined up nicely. Let's keep the centre line as it is there, Phil. Let's hope we don't come down to Earth with too much of a bang. So keep looking to the end of the runway. Yeah. Keep trying to fly. Push the wrap pressure. Oh, and there we go. Beautiful! How about that? Congratulations, that was absolutely yeah, was brilliant, mate. Fantastic. That's oh, a I great lesson. You're very kind, thank you. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, and wow a bit more as well. That was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. A truly, truly great experience. Richard spent around £40,000 doing his commercial pilot and instructor training here in Australia, significantly less than what it can cost in the UK. But wherever you've trained, the industry here is experiencing a shortage of pilots and instructors, so the good news is there's plenty of demand down under. 
for people who are pilots or, or training to be instructors back, yep. at, back in Britain, would you say there are opportunities for work? Absolutely, 100%, definitely. As long as they're willing to work hard and they're a good operator, you know, there's no reason why you know, they wouldn't get an opportunity somewhere. You can fly more, which you love doing. You yes. can earn more, yep. which we all love doing. That's right. And you've got better weather and better views. Oh, that's and right. And more, more customers. It's fantastic. I really consider myself very lucky for what I do. I'm living the life, so to speak. <laughs> I've absolutely loved my first flying lesson. But don't worry, if you'd rather keep your feet on the ground, there are plenty of other jobs in demand down under, and they're all on the skilled occupation list. For more information, log on to channel4.com slash forhomes. Back to one of my trickiest ever Australian property searches. Clubbing together might make financial sense for workmates Al and Dave, but buying an apartment together is a massive leap of faith in their friendship. So far, Dave said no to Marrickville and the dream pad in Red Hot Redfern. This is very plain. It's, it's not blowing me away, to be honest. At least they agree the Art Deco apartment in Coogee is a possibility. But the area itself has already up and come, so I've decided to give them period charm in a location that's just about to. Solidly residential Dulwich Hill is a bit further from the city centre, but it's about to get a massive boost with a new light rail service that's going to improve access into the central business district, attracting young professionals to the area. The fourth property I brought them to see is a 1920s apartment that's got all the Art Deco character that Dave could ask for. I just hope it's up Owl Street. Here, we've got two double bedrooms, which are apart. One's at the front of the flat, one's at the back. We've got a lot more character, but it's finished. I don't think there's anything you could do to it to improve its value. It's a nice size. Got some nice detail on the roof and... I like the floor. Yeah. This part into the kitchen is a little bit strange. Okay. To be critical of the flat, it would be nice if the living room had the view that the kitchen does. Honestly, not looking impressed. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're not. Yeah, just soaking it in, really. Um, it's not grabbing me yeah, sort of immediately. Well, that was the danger. At $519,000 or £325,000, it is £50,000 under budget, though. So if Dave sniffs a bargain, maybe he'll try and get his way. I'll probably discount it, to be fair. Yeah, you'd rather spend... It is quite a lot of money. Hundred grand's quite a lot. Prefer to be close to the city. Well, that's this place ruled out, then. I'm worried. I've shown Alan Dave four of the best properties on the market in their price range. And with Coogee the only possibility, I'm not sure I'm any closer to finding them something they both like. They're running out of options fast. We have had a bit of a U-turn, and we're now considering the, the Redfern new build. Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's truth. I wasn't expecting that. Dave pretty much hated Redfern, but maybe the pennies dropped. I kind of took in your advice that the Redfern... Being so close to the city, it's kind of a dead cert. I could actually, thinking about it, see us using it as a party pad. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a terrible ad. Um, I think we're sort of the wrong flat. Although shocked, I am delighted Dave's finally realised if its investment potential is after, being smack bang in the middle of Sydney is a surefire winner. Now Redfern and Coogee are both in the running again, I need to sit them down and work out a plan of action. You've got to be, be taking decisions now on which elements are going to be more important. Is it the lifestyle? Is it the money? Is it the area? So, Coogee's got the character. It's got the beach. I think Redfern's probably more of a lad's pad. Yeah. Probably suits us a little bit more, to be honest. I'm, I'm edging towards Redfern. Cos we mentioned we were, Redfern. We would be paying the price at Redfern to, to look over a car park, to wait for things to be built around it, for shops, cafes, yeah. bars to come in. Oh, blimey. Now it's Al doing a U-turn. I think we all need some time out before they decide whether to go back to either the Redfern or the Coogee apartment for a second viewing. <laughs> the eastern suburbs might be famous for their laid-back beach lifestyle, but what's less well-known is their teeming with Art Deco architecture. 
Most of Sydney's Art Deco houses and apartment blocks were built in the late 1920s and 1930s as the city rebounded from the Great Depression and expanded towards the coast. The Maclay Regis building was one of the most famous residential addresses in Australia after it was built in 1939 and it was seen as the height of good living. The foyer is classic Art Deco. It's a faithfully preserved symphony of parquet floors, original tiling and curved design details. This £840,000 sixth floor apartment has also been restored and updated to give the Art Deco style a contemporary twist with its eclectic mix of original and reproduction period furniture. But you'd need at least £8 million for a home like this. Point Piper House pays homage to the classic curves of the cruise liner but it hasn't always been sympathetically looked after. In the 1990s, the then owners added a roof completely out of keeping with the building's character. The current residents have faithfully reinstated the trademark curved windows, hardwood floors and feature fireplaces, as well as adding a pool and a contemporary pagoda that's designed to perfectly frame the view of the Harbour Bridge, Sydney's most iconic piece of 30s architecture. Back with British work colleagues Al and Dave and what's turning into a very unpredictable house hunt. While Al's decided he's keen on the beach lifestyle on offer in Coogee, Dave suddenly decided he likes the luxury pad in up-and-coming Redfern. Redfern's probably more of a lad's pad. Yeah. Probably suits us a little bit more, to be honest. I'm, I'm edging towards Redfern. With them completely split down the middle, they've decided to head back to Redfern for a second viewing to see if Dave's about turn is for real. So back in red fern, boys. Feel good? It does. It does feel good. Let's get you back in, especially you, David. Just... Let's have a look. When I first brought them to see this place, Al did his best to sell it to Dave. Now the boot's on the other foot. A bit of a different atmosphere in the room today. <laughs> David's not so sure. Even David's smiling. <laughs> yeah. yeah? Yeah. It's big. I could see my furniture fitting in. It... It's vastly different in size to any other flat that we've been to. So I suppose we've got to decide if it's, if it's the one we want to go for. Yeah. And it is a big commitment. I did tell you that at the beginning, Al. He's looking for reasons not to buy it, while Dave suddenly got the solutions for everything. I think if I did buy the place, I'd probably get a stonemason in, enlarge it, have a drying area, have a garbage disposal installed. Hang on, Dave. You're not buying it on your own. Al's still got to have his say. It does lack a little bit of natural light. And he's not 100% convinced. Well, the auction's in five days' time. What do you want to do about it? We did come here straight after Kudji. Yeah. And this didn't have a lot of the elements that Kudji had, which added to why we were a bit sort of in two minds. Understood. So I think it'd be worth seeing the Kudji one again. Yeah. I'm not surprised. I think it's a good decision. Yeah. So it's Al's turn to get things his way, and back to Coogee it is. Let's hope a revisit does help finally clarify things one way or the other. Righty-ho, this is where it gets even more interesting. With that small second bedroom, to make this place work, they'd have to borrow some space from the living room. If they got permission from the other residents of the building, moving the wall should add quite a bit of value. So I've asked a local contractor to come round and measure up. What are you here? There's nothing to it, you know. A beam through the ceiling to take the weight of the roof. The wall back here, no problems. How long would it take to move the wall? Oh, mate, we'd, we'd bowl that over in about a week. Right. Build us talk. <laughs> Don't listen to it. Well. <laughs> if Alan and Dave are prepared to put up with a bit more disruption, I've come up with another much bigger option for adding value. Phase two, though, would be one for the future. After a couple of years saving, they could apply for planning consent to build up into the roof space. Well, that's the old pitch of the roof there, so what we'd do is we'd take that off through there, lift the roof up, and just put a flat roof through. And that would take how long? Something like that would probably be three months or so, three or four months. Right. And about 180000 And with the apartment on the market for offers around $600,000, or £375,000, they'd not only get more living space, they could also make a tidy profit. If that was done, it would be worth eight to eight fifty. You're just going to sneak over the top of that roof next door and you'll get some ocean views and that's worth 100 grand on its own, so... I do like the idea of the, of the fully finished job with the, the heights yeah. and roof, it, especially with the potential side. coast view, that would be nice. So there's a lot for the guys to think about. This place gives them the beach, the period charm, 
and the opportunity to get stuck into a project or two. But making the most of its potential means a big investment in time and money. So are they prepared to commit to it? So what do you think? I mean, taking on the smaller job, you know, it's, mm. it's doable, but actually lifting the whole ceiling up and costing 160, 170, it's just it's too much for a big job. Kind of makes it easier in a way to make the decision. But... Yeah. Looks like we're uh, back onto Redfern. Yeah. Hallelujah. I think they've finally made a decision, and it looks like they're both happy with it. The Redfern pad gives them the opportunity to make money just by sitting on it. And for a couple of first-time buyers, it's a less risky proposition. My job now is to get it for them. That might not be so straightforward. It's, it's, it's going to be sold, that much we know. Um, it's due to go to auction in five days' time unless someone gets there first. There is a bid on the table that's around 600. I think I'd, I'd be comfortable paying, ideally, the 600, but I'd probably go for 620, 620, 630, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, we'll be getting close to out of the range of what we could physically do, never mind sort of emotionally how much we want to spend. It's getting, it's getting to that line, so. But I really don't want you making any rash decisions or things that you'll regret, so why don't we arrange to speak tomorrow? Yeah. After all the toing and froing of the last few days, I want Al and Dave to be certain they've made the right choice. So a night to sleep on the biggest financial decision of their lives is certainly time well spent. I hope they'll go for it. I think they will. I'm, I'm not betting on this one. Coming up, the pressure's on and the clock's ticking. So you think the vendor would accept an offer, but it would have to be under auction conditions? But can I get the deal done? Fingers crossed. Haven't come this close. I don't want to lose out now. I'm in Sydney helping Brit work colleagues Alistair Hewson and David Luxton club together so they can afford to get on the super expensive property ladder here. However, they've had one or two differences of opinion along the way and Dave's been holding out for a doer offer. But after a lot of toing and froing, We have had a bit of a U-turn. He's taken my advice that buying in Redfern, one of Sydney's most up-and-coming areas, means when they come to sell, they should be able to turn a healthy profit. Alistair's smiling. <laughs> Even David's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Buying a property with a mate is a massive commitment, but Al and Dave have had a chance to sleep on it, and they've made the decision they want to go ahead and buy the Redfern apart. The challenge now for me is to get it for them, and at a price they like. In Australia, it's more common for properties to go to auction. And sold. Congratulations to you, sir. The apartment's due to go under the hammer in just four days' time. I don't want the boys to get carried away with the bidding, or worse, lose out completely. So my strategy is to try and negotiate a deal before the auction. So you think the vendor would accept an offer, but it would have to be under auction conditions? What, so they'd have to exchange contracts right away? The agents told me there's already one offer on the table at the guide price of $600,000, or £375,000. So if Alan and Dave want to get it, they're going to have to go in higher than that. I've had a good long chat with the agent. His gut feel, he said, was 610 would probably do it, okay. or at least would give them a sensible conversation. So I don't know where your heads are at, but my suggestion, given that piece of information, we should probably go in at 6.07. Yeah, sounds, I mean, it sounds good. And, and allow ourselves to be talked up a little bit and try and get it out of the auction. I'd be leaning towards trying to get it sorted, to be honest. I'll have to quickly go with Dave, but I reckon we'd, we'd go for that option. Cheers. Thanks, Alistair. All right, thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Well, they're going for it, which is absolutely superb news. Uh, we're going to make an opening bid at 6.07 and try and keep it out of the auction room. But in order to keep it out of the auction room, we have to comply with auction conditions, which means they have to sign that contract right away. <laughs> I think they're a bit tense. I'm hoping the fact Alan David chain free first-time buyers with finances in place is going to work in their favour. The offer that they've asked me to put to you is for 607000 I've encouraged them really to put best foot forward with, with the 607. Uh, it, it's kind of a one, one shot wonder to try and keep it out of the auction. But th they love it and they want, they're happy to move on it right away. Okay, speak to you soon. Bye. 
Well, there we are. The die is cast. Fingers crossed. Having come this close, I don't want to lose out now. All we can do now is wait. Next day, Al and Dave have got their answer. And it's good news. Their first offer has been accepted. Alistair, congratulations. Thank you very much. Fantastic news. So 607 and it won't be going to auction. Just what you wanted. So obviously you're welcome to the first barbecue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I'd love to come. Well done. Terrific place. Good deal. Thanks very much. Um, all the best. OK, cheers, mate. See you. Bye. Bye. Happy boys, happy boys, bought their party pad. There's no stopping them now. The Aussie buying process moves at lightning speed. It takes on average around three months to buy a home in the UK, but Al and Dave have managed to get the keys in just six weeks. A few boxes to sort out and things, but at least we've got it all here. As they begin to unpack in their new apartment, Al and Dave can finally look forward to settling into Sydney life. Now, originally I wasn't keen on the flat. I wanted some, somewhere that was a bit older and we could do up, but dumped to our furniture and it's, it's up and running, so it's not like we're fixing anything or doing any rooms up or anything. Not painting any walls, so it's kind of, in the end, it's worked out for the best. I think it should be a good lifestyle. There's some bars around the corner that, you know, pretty decent. We've met a few other local people. It's, it's quite pleasant, friendly atmosphere. So, yeah, I think we're quite excited about it, really. I think the future's going to involve lots of barbecues and lots of uh, sessions down the beach. Cheers, Phil. Thanks very much, Phil. Found our place and pretty happy so far. Always welcome to crash. Cheers, guys. Next week, I'm going back to meet the families who I helped make the move two years ago to find out what Aussie life is really like. Hello! Hi. The Davidson family swapped Basingstoke for the bush outside Melbourne, but the reality of their new life has been anything but easy. I think the whole transition is actually... is, is really difficult on a relationship. I'll discover how their move came close to disaster. Those bushfires were just horrific. And that's before we even mention the wildlife. There were heaps and heaps of red bats. <laughs> 10 o'clock tonight on Channel 4 and we go live. You will cry over spilled cash in the million pound drop with Davina. Now next tonight when your bits and bobs are not quite right. Embarrassing bodies.